Hello there. How's it going? All right, all right, Chris. Where are you? I'm I'm at home actually. Oh, okay. I'm just, yeah, I'm just I'm just sitting out. I've got a little summer house in the garden with my dartboard, so I'm just you know, <laughs> it's too hot inside. This this heat wave is killing me. Yeah, yeah. There's, there imagine. is no there is no oxygen in in the United Kingdom at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> well, highly unusual actually <laughs> <laughs> you have a little bit of daylight left uh, Chris <laughs> you, you got to explain a couple of things first of all um, what you know you named your new record Will of the People and mm. I'm personally I'm not even sure what the Will of the People will be right now in 2020 <laughs> I hope you can explain that to us do you know what? I'm not I'm not sure I can explain it I, I think um Yeah, I mean, I, th I think, you know, there's, 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 there's lots of connotations in, in the, the lyrics and the title. I think that, you know, there's probably an element of sarcasm in there as well. Uh, probably quite a large element of sarcasm in, in, in quite a lot of the songs, actually. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think it's, I, th I think it's a fairly reflective uh, piece of, you know, art on, on, on particularly the last couple of years, you know, and, and, and the things that we've been through and, You know, the other, you know, there, there's the obvious thing that we've all been through, which is the, the pandemic. Yeah. And then, and then there's the other stuff that, 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 that I think has, you know, probably stuff that's always been going on really, but because most of us have always been, always been at work or been out living our lives, we don't generally tend to sit around and watch the news that often. And then all of a sudden there's a big global pandemic. And for the first time ever, we actually watch the news and go, oh, fucking hell, all this other really bad shit's going on as well. And, um, you know, the reality is, is all that other bad shit has, has actually sort of been going on for a while. <laughs> just, it just, we're all actually like really aware of it now, you know, um, because we had nothing better to do but to watch TV and watch BBC News or Sky News for, you know, 12 hours a day for two years, um, which I, I, I try not to do anymore. You know, I, I try yeah. to go outside a little bit more these days. <laughs> Uh, Matt, I read somewhere that Matt called the record a best hit, a greatest hits record with just new songs. Yeah, But like a, a, a sum, a summary of all your previous sounds. I mean, for me personally, when I listen to it, and I gotta be careful when when I'm saying this because you guys do whatever you do and it's still muse. But I, I thought it's like a slight return to rock music. Yeah. I, 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 I was just talking to somebody else actually and I, I, I sort of said that I felt that with this new album it, it's almost like a to me it's like we've taken all the things that I feel that we do best and kind of put them together within an album and I think as a band we've always been very keen to experiment we've always been very keen to try and dip our toes into different things and try different styles and different genres and really kind of push ourselves into areas that we're not always a hundred percent comfortable in mm -hmm. uh, just to see if there's anything there, you know, anything there that we can, you know, make something of. And, you know, some of those things have been big successes and some of them have been monumental failures. <laughs> and, um, I know, really. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think on this record, I, I feel like it, it's just a, yeah, to me, it's just a reflection of all the things that I think we as a band do, do well, you know, um, and, I, and I think as much as, you know, there have been times when we've moved away from rock and we've moved away from guitar music a little bit. Yeah. I don't think there's any denying that when we do do guitar music and we do do rock, we, we do it quite well. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and I think that, you know, the ideas, you know, some of the ideas that came around in the early stages of the band with, you know, you know, the idea of having kind of heavy rock music, but having these kind of synth pop elements as well. And, And also the classical influence as well, which I think has taken a little bit of a backseat on pre you know the last few albums. There's not been mm -hmm. so much of the the piano stuff, which I think, to be honest, is something me and Dom quite often give Matt quite a bit of grief about because you know we both think he's such a good piano player, and yeah. actually that's a side of the band that we kind of you know think is pretty freaking good, you know. And um, yeah, for some reason, it's sort of taken a little bit of a backseat on, on the, the previous couple of albums. So it was nice that there was a little bit of that coming back with songs like Liberation. You know? So um, yeah. Liberation, I, Liberation, I like is as close as, Liberation is as close as to Queen as, you, as I've heard you guys before, I guess. Yeah. I, th I think anytime you do all those big vocals, you know, it always sort of, uh, 
you know, it takes you back to Freddie, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, when I think when radio people read the track list for the very first time, everyone, including me, goes like, well, I hope we're fucking fucked. It's going to be a singer. <laughs> Please make it a singer. <laughs> it, it, no, it may well be. It may well be. Or it may well be the... Um, You know, we, we might have finally got a, a, a new song that we can close the gig with that isn't Nice of Sidonia, maybe, you know. I think we've been closing our gigs with Nice of Sidonia for the last 15 years. It would, you know, <laughs> we might finally have got a new one. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, it'd be, great to, it'd be great to be a single, you know. And I, th I, think, I think lyrically as well, I mean, it, it just sums, to me, it just sums everything up, you know. Everything that's gone on, everything that's going on, everything that everybody feels right now. You know, irrespective of your political leanings or your views or whatever, whatever you think, you know, I think that's where most people live right now is that, yeah, we're just all pretty fucking fucking fucked, aren't we? I mean, it's just, <laughs> just, it's just the way it is. <laughs> How much uh, um, in the songwriting process were you involved personally? Um, not, not so much. I mean, obviously it was quite difficult because, um, yeah, we were, we were a different parts of the world, you know, and, and obviously there was, there was, um, you yeah, know, COVID and lockdowns and things like that. So it wasn't, um, it wasn't so easy for us to get together in the way that we normally would get together or as frequently as we would get together. Yeah. So, you know, I think there was a, a sort of element of, of, you know, Matt and Dom sort of had to crack on with certain things in LA while I was here. Um, but, you know, we were, we were in fairly regular contact anyway and you know we still did quite a lot of work together but I think it was probably the sort of the kind of precursor to, to actually recording um was was something that you know we, we weren't as together as as we normally would be but yeah. I, I don't think it really had any you know bad impact on the album or anything like that I mean I think I think that when it came to the times that we were working together you know everybody still has a voice you know everybody still has an opinion that is valid and You know, everybody's free to to air those opinions and you know have a, have a voice in the studio. So, you know, it, it didn't really feel that different to any other album. It was just you know, like like anything else, the the inconvenience of a pandemic <laughs> yeah. um, made it made it a bit of a challenge at times. <clears throat> Is this the first record you guys produced yourself? Yourselves? I'm sorry. No, uh, we did the resistance. We produced ourselves. Yeah. And the second law we produced ourselves as well. Isn't it sometimes better to have somebody in there who goes like, nah, not like that. Do you know what? Sometimes, <laughs> Do it, it, sometimes it is and sometimes it isn't. And I, I haven't really made my mind up, but I kind of feel like every time we do a record without a producer, we always go into the next record thinking, you should probably have a producer on this one because, you know, maybe we took things a little bit far, far there and we shouldn't have, we needed someone to pull, hold us back a little bit. Yeah. And then we do a record with a producer and we're like, nah, we don't want a producer. Next album, we're going to do ourselves. <laughs> so I, it, it's sort of this, um, yes, it sort of flip-flops around a little bit. But I, I think, you know, it, the, the problem is with a, you know, with a producer, I mean, it is great. It's great to have that extra opinion in the band. And I think particularly being a three-piece, it's not a lot of opinions to, 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 to throw around. There's only three people in the band. And sometimes yeah. you do feel that maybe it would be good to have an outsider's perspective, someone who is involved in the music, but not as close to it as we are. But then at the same time, you've got to find a producer that all three people in the band connect with and respect their opinion. And that's not always easy either. You know, it's not always easy to find one person that everybody in the band wants to agree with all the time. <laughs> so, <laughs> You know, we've, you know, yeah. but, but, but then sometimes, you know, some of the best moments can be born out of those types of frictions as well. I mean, sometimes it's, you know, those moments in the studio where you've got four people all wanting to do something completely different with the same song and you can spend hours and hours arguing about it or trying to figure out a way to get everybody's little bits in. And it can either be, you know, again, it's another example of it can either be a monumental failure or it could be a, you know, the best thing you've ever done, you know. <laughs> I actually think Nights of Sidonia was one of those songs where, yeah. um, you know, Rich Costley produced that album. And I can remember, you know, the, the, the three of us in the, in the live room with Rich, we, we were just sort of more in the sort of rehearsal phase of it. And we were jamming out the, the, the whole sort of intro part and the, the guitar and the trumpet parts. And then the, the first verse when, you know, Matt starts singing. Mm -hmm. 
And, you know, everybody had all these different ideas on how it should be and what the groove should be and what this. And I can remember we were sort of there for ages and ages and ages arguing about it. And I can't even remember who wanted what now, but <laughs> all I know is it turned out to be one of the best songs we'd ever done. So, you know, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes those frictions are, are, are a good thing. You know, sometimes it's good to be challenged and, you know, sometimes when you when you when you work on a song as a band, you get used to the way that something sounds. You know, by the time we get to record something, we've already been playing it for weeks. You know, played it a million times already. So, you know, that there is some. Sometimes you have that kind of sense of comfort in the familiarity of something. Yeah. And then when somebody comes along and changes it, you're like, "Whoa, what do you mean? No." <laughs> and and it seems so out of the question. But then you actually give it a go, and then that becomes your new kind of familiar. You know, and it. And yeah. it, it you have to just be, you know, you have to be quite open-minded when you have somebody in and who's, who's, you know, going to come in with opinions. And obviously it has to be the right type of person as well. So I don't know. I like, I like both. That was a very long answer to your question. Sorry. <laughs> you know, when it, when it, when you tell a story like this, it reminds me of this bad news segment. We haven't recorded anything yet. You know, just this whole thing. And it's just, it's just crazy, but it's, you know, it seems to be true. Now you, you said before, the new record is going to be, you know, it's like a sort of a ref reflection on, on the times that we've lived through and, uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and we've been through. But on the other hand, it's sometimes very personal as well, right? Yeah, I, I, th I think it is. But I think, you know, you know, I, th I think the, 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 the effect that the, the, the times have had on our own, on our souls, if you like, you know, or our own, you know, us as individuals, you know, it, it, it's, you know, I think, I think a lot of us have had to do a lot of soul searching, you know, I think, I think it's probably the first time that a lot of us have really had to face ourselves, you know, mm. for, for a long period of time uh, and discover who, who we actually really are without everything else going on. Because, you know, we all kind of get lost in this life that, that is, is going on around us all of the time, whether that's work or your friends or other people or things that you do. Um, you know, none of us have ever really got to experience a life where nothing's happening at all. You know? <laughs> and you're, you, you really are just left with yourself and the people really close to you. And uh, I think it, it, it stirs up a lot of emotions, you know, and, and I'm sure for Matt, you know, I mean, he, I know, I know that in the initial stages of, of the pandemic, I know that he was in LA. I think Don was in London, but then ended up just about getting to LA. And I know Matt was, I think he tried to get his, I think he was trying to get his mum out to LA before the flights closed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there was a real sense of, you know, everything's fucked, you know, everything's really going downhill badly. And then, and then it just, everything just stopped, you know, like literally just like that, everything stopped. Um, and it was, yeah, it was weird. I mean, I, I, I just don't even know what I thought at that time, you know, and it's only really now I'm sort of, you sort of look back. I mean, I actually had two babies during that whole time. So it was even weirder in that sense because yeah. you know, I, I sort of brought these two children into this crazy fucking world. <laughs> and it's, you know, it, it, you know, for me, it was, a, it was a very, very odd experience. I mean, it was nice in a way because I got to spend lots of time at home with my kids and stuff. Yeah. But yeah. It, it definitely was a time for a lot of self-reflection and, you know, What, what do you do when life stops like that? You know, what, what's next? What, what happened? You know, and it, it makes you think, think about things like, you know, what happens if the band stops? You know, what do I do? What, what, you know, you know, all these things that you take for granted, you know, that, that I don't think any of us ever thought some of the things that were taken away would be taken away. Yeah. yeah and absolutely. it was, yeah, it was, it was just mental. It was absolutely mental. Now your record, and you wouldn't be music if you wouldn't do something extraordinary. And now uh, your record is probably a second record that's uh, that can be in the charts and uh, uh, to be bought as a non fungible token. Mm. Now I'm I'm unbelievably old, so I don't even know how to get there. <laughs> <laughs> who, who had the, the idea to put this out a, as an NFT? I think it was something that came from Warner's initially, and all right, okay. I've um, yeah, I, it's it's a weird one, isn't it? It's a weird one, the NFT yeah. thing. It's a bit, you know, I'm not entirely sure that I I get it. I I, I don't know, but it's obviously something that people want. Mm -hmm. and I, I and I think that it's. You know, it's much like, you know, I, I guess back in the day, you know, when our grandparents were looking at CDs and going, what the fuck is this? You know, yeah. <laughs> you know maybe it's a similar thing. I don't know. And I think it, it is something that is, is there and it's present and it's 
you know, getting it's 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 a, it's a, a thing that's getting bigger. Yeah. Um, and I, th- I think, you know, you have to be open to those things. And if, you know, I, I guess it, as a band, it's always cool to be the first to do stuff, you know. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, I'm a bit like you in a sense, you know, in the digital world, I don't really know what anything is. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean, it is, it is a very strange, it's a very strange concept for me. And I, I yeah, I, I personally find find it hard to get my head around it a little bit. But. All right. Um, but it I gives think- a fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well i think warner does but it's it's okay <laughs> well, i think i think we're running out of time because sophie already like goes like get to the end <laughs> so thank you very much for talking to us and cool. uh, thanks very much uh i hope i see you soon back i mean you've just been here but i hope you're going to be back with the uh some yeah, we'll the shows back, next, back next year yeah Right on. It's my, it's my, it's my oldest Mew shirt, actually. Nice. That's a good one, that. Got 20 years. Wow. <laughs> Great. Nice talking to you, Chris. And Cheers. Uh, hopefully Easy. talk to you soon. See you Bye-bye. later.